our community needs long-term rentals and they need affordable long-term rentals and they need rentals particularly for young people or elderly people who don't have a lot of extra income. What we're seeing is an entire generation priced out of the housing market. Houses are being purchased by people that are wanting to retire. They, they're selling their house, they can make a cash offer on a house. The young couple, they need financing. Normally in a city, it's found that there are about 5% of rentals available for rent, whereas in Jefferson County, it was found in 2015 that there were 1% or less available rentals on the market. I personally am working two full-time jobs at my businesses to keep them afloat because I cannot hire the people that can live here and stay here, even in the general area, even in the East Jefferson County area. You can feel the pressure of people not being able to find places to stay, rooms to rent, houses to buy about five years ago, but really in the last three years, and specifically this year, worse than ever. I have had a couple of great applicants for some of the positions um, from the East Coast, and one even came out here and looked around and could not find a place to rent. And the thing is that some of the entry level positions, they are maybe making $30,000, and I could see that that would be a challenge to find a place to stay, but a lot of the my staff are making forty to $50,000 a year, um, some a little more, and they're equally challenged at finding places to rent. It, it's that there is no places to rent. If we don't have places that that young families can live, then we don't have school teachers and we don't have professional chefs um, or people to work in the restaurants or any of the retail. In the course of a year and a half, we lived in 11 different places, some of which were two-week house sits, some of which we paid for a short period of time. I remember waking up each morning wondering where we might stay the next day or the next week and trying to provide my son with a sense of it's going to be okay when I didn't know that it was going to be okay was really difficult. Ultimately, I think the thing that saved me from leaving town was when I was at my wit's end and I put in the newsletter at my church, we need help. Does anyone have a lead on a place to stay? Um, you know, I'm a working single mom. I have two businesses in town and I needed help. Someone stepped forward and said, well, we have a basement. You can stay in our basement until you find a long-term situation. And that was the end of our survival mode. We were never actually on the street for a night, but that sense of homelessness was there every single day. So one of the things I think is important is to kind of challenge the idea of what people who are housing insecure look like. Um, I did things right. I went to university, I got married, I bought a house, um, worked on the house for eight years. We ended up losing it in the subprime market crash in 2008. Fast forward, divorce, rebuilding my career, shifting gears. I thought, well, if I'm going to be looking for a new job and I'd love to get out of the city, why not check out Jefferson County? Moved here um, for a job with the Community Foundation and had no idea what the housing problem was gonna be like. I stayed with a friend in Brennan. I have a high school daughter and very quickly that drive was just too much for us and so we started um, staying in Port Townsend and by staying I mean we have stayed since school started she has stayed in nine different beds in Jefferson County and <clears throat> I knew talking about her was gonna be hard <laughs> We joke about her using this on her college essays. Um, you know, the time she was homeless. <laughs> it's not anything I thought that I would introduce into the life of my kid. But uh, it just became, very quickly it became apparent there were just no rentals available. 
Jefferson Community Foundation knows of at least nine small to medium-sized businesses that decided not to relocate to Jefferson County due to the lack of available workforce housing. In 2017, Jefferson County declared a housing emergency for the county, and they cited many pieces of evidence in that declaration. HUD found that about half of all renters in Jefferson County are cost burdened. And cost burdened means that they're paying more than 30% of their income just on putting a roof over their head. And about a quarter of renters in Jefferson County are severely cost burdened, which means that they're spending more than 50% of their income on housing needs alone. Median home prices have increased 49% between 2015 and 2018. 25% of housing units in the county sit vacant for a large portion of the year. So the person making the average wage should be spending $900 a month on their housing costs to be able to afford them. Now, when you compare that to someone making minimum wage, they should actually be paying only $600 a month. And if you think about what you can find in our community for $600 a month that includes rent as well as utilities, it's basically nothing. So when we look at the reality that there's almost no housing available in this range, it's really no surprise that workers are either leaving or they're not coming here at all. And so we're missing out on new talent that could be adding to our workforce, our economy, and the fabric of our community. A sense of home is a fundamental developmental building block. Children experiencing homelessness are more likely to experience aggression, depression, and anxiety than their peers who have stable housing. They're twice as likely to be diagnosed with learning disabilities. They're three times as likely to be labeled with behavioral and emotional problems. It is just so rare that we have uh, the opportunity or that we have something tangible that we can do to alleviate and prevent suffering. And we actually have something tangible that we could do in this situation to help our community. I grew up in Jefferson County and I've seen the place change a lot, but nothing like the last few years Housing prices since 2015 have escalated to the point where it looks like a whole generation is going to get priced out of the housing market. So we need to ask ourselves, what kind of community do we want to be? We get to make that decision, and the choice is ours to make. This is a community problem. We're all suffering from it, whether we know it or not, um, and we can all be a part of the solution. So I'm standing in front of an ADU, accessory dwelling unit, which is in the front yard of my house. There's a lot and a half that this house and ADU sit on, so it's a lot for me to manage by myself. I decided to try a little bit of a work trade in part for the cost of the building, which is definitely below market rate. And when this more recent renter moved in, I asked him if he was interested in that, and he said definitely, someone in his mid-20s. So I could ask him to do various things, feed my cat when I'm gone for the day, and mow the lawn in the summer, and put my screens up. What's happened is we have formed this really cool relationship of basically kindness and friendship. It's nice not living here alone, you know, having another person on the property, and all of those services that he provides, it's not a lot of time on his part. It doesn't take a lot of his life away from him, but it definitely adds to my life. So I really feel like there's a win-win situation here, and I'm, I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna look to renting this place on that basis for the future as well. When we first moved to town, we knew a lot of people that had been looking for uh, a space in Port Townsend and rented hotels in like Port Angeles and were commuting like from a little little hotel for well over a year or something like that. We found a family that wanted someone to move in with their mother and basically just trade um, rent for being there for her and providing care. It just so happens that I have a background in caregiving, so it worked out quite well. If people look into it, there might be a situation where there's a senior that would be far more secure at home if there was someone that's dependable living there in that house with them. 
I know that I could rent out my um, cabin for more than I get. Um, but uh, once you have a stable tenant, it, it, there just isn't really any uh, work involved, you know. Um, and if you're going to do something else or short-term rentals or whatever, it's a constant um, worry. So I'm grateful for that. So I moved here in 2017 to become the executive director of Jefferson Community Foundation, and I found the rare rental home through Craigslist, the only one I saw listed. And I was paying the same rate I was in Seattle, and it had a lot of problems. And then I found out that the owner was selling the house. And that's when my community kicked into action. All of a sudden, uh, my friend connected me to a homeowner that actually was in my neighborhood that she knew. This is a person who would buy houses, fix them up, you know, new electrical, new windows, new countertops, and then sell them below market rate to working people locally. And she came and basically interviewed me to buy her house, even though I wasn't in the market. Um, my friend knew that I was gonna be in trouble if I lost my apartment. This was my community saying, we want you to stay here. And she offered me this house below market rate. Not only that, but she Taylor created a contract that was owner finance that would meet my needs. We sat down and talked about my financial situation and she shaped something that made it possible for me to own my very first home. And it was here in Port Townsend uh, where I plan on spending the rest of my life and contributing to my community. I'm gonna pay it forward. I'm gonna take my extra side yard and put a tiny home or a rental on there and make sure that it's affordable housing for the, the next working people that are trying to build their lives here. So when we think about housing and how to move towards solutions, I think it's important to also shift the narrative on housing away from it simply being a market and an investment opportunity toward housing really being a community asset and a vital part of that ecosystem that helps our community thrive and will help our community thrive into the future. I always see everybody trying to find one solution and there I think that it it's going to take many solutions and many people adjusting um, their way of thinking. Everybody needs to be a part of the solution and everybody can do just a little bit and all of us working together um, can make a dent in the issues in housing in Jefferson County. Whether it means talking to your neighbors, if your neighbors have something that could be used for housing, they're not using for housing, talking to them about that, to um, choosing to take your ADU out of Airbnb into long-term housing, to um, becoming an activist and attending city council meetings or county commissioner meetings to change zoning regulations to make it more feasible for affordable housing to be built and workforce housing to be built. There's a lot of things, obstacles in the way, some of which could be moved out of the way with public engagement and public involvement. So I would like to encourage all of us to step up to the plate and get cracking. <laughs>